If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard in Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Voting isn't just going to the polls on Election Day anymore. Options like early voting, mail-in voting, and ballot drop boxes are available to more voters and are growing in popularity. How to Vote, a tool created by Democracy Works, breaks down the options your state offers for casting a ballot, empowering you to decide when and where to vote. Democracy works best when we all vote, but misinformation and confusion about election procedures have resulted in a low voter count turnout. How to Vote, a tool created by Democracy Works, takes the guesswork out of the voting process. Go to Ballot Ready for a nonpartisan guide to your entire ballot. From there, you can compare candidates based on stances, on issues, biographies, and endorsements, and save your choice to use when you vote by mail or in voting booth. You can even request your absentee ballot or make a plan to vote early on Election Day. This election matters. Make sure you have a plan to vote and vote informed. This year, with changes to polling places and vote-by-mail laws as a result of COVID, it is more important than ever to have a plan to vote. Local elected officials affect our lives every day. They decide who to prosecute, monitor, or quality of our drinking water and choices for the leadership of our schools. Third per- 30% of our voters take the time to vote and then leave some part of their ballot blank. This is a missed opportunity to choose the leaders of our communities. It's okay if you're unfamiliar with some of the local positions. We recommend hosting a ballot party. Get together with your friends or over Zoom, split up the research, and go through your ballots together. everybody this is rick del santo joining me tonight is the dvd freak matthew tremble this is the pro zone we're going to be talking about a lot of uh professional wrestling coming up survivor series in three weeks and um daniel bryan made an announcement on talking smack so freak how are you doing all right it's just yeah. uh just us two tonight it's cool you know just hanging out shooting the shit yeah um so I guess talking smack was that? When's that air? Does that air? Did that air after Hell in a Cell? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> All I heard was that it was over the weekend. I think it was after the Hell in a Cell or something like that. So um, I don't watch a lot of the exclusive content uh, on the network. Um, I do watch 205 Live. I, I, um, I was watching that pretty heavily for a while, but now that I took the Cruiserweight title and brought it over to NXT pretty much exclusively, what's the purpose of? Uh, 205 existing if there's no title to go for i mean yeah. but those guys those guys end up in nxt anyways uh, for the most yeah, part so like so. what are they actually fighting for at that point yeah like yeah whatever yeah well daniel bryan um i'm talking smack uh basically came out and said he's considering this his last run he's going to be working with a lot of younger stars or that he wants to work with a lot of young stars and put them over um you know, who? one of the things that came up, and um, I'm not exactly sure where I heard this, but was Chad Gable, a.k.a. Shorty G. And I think oh, that, God. Yeah, I know. I hate that. Don't, thing don't say that. <laughs> I think, uh, according to something I read yesterday or the day before or heard on a uh, podcast at maybe Wrestling Inc. that he's actually went back to using Chad Gable and Shorty G is no more. I really hope that's true because I was really, like, annoyed with the whole Shorty G uh the thing that was just oh my god it was ridiculous like seriously and, and considering that he's like possibly one of the greatest pure wrestlers on the roster like they're making an ass of him yeah yeah i heard about the name change as well um i don't exactly know what they could be changing his name to because knowing vince will just want him to be named chad or something yeah. we're not allowed uh <laughs> we're not allowed two word yeah. names anymore yeah. so yeah i know well, I, from what I heard, Lars Sullivan will, be, you know, they're gearing towards already Lars. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 
So like I'm I, surprised I can't even, he's even back. I know. I mean, he he um Vince must love him because he's given him like a thousand chances already. Yeah. From you know, uh, you know the time where he had an anxiety attack and then said that he couldn't go out, you know, and then all of a sudden <laughs> came back a few months later, and then all this, you know, I guess, I guess he got injured relatively quick, and then all this random unpleasurable stuff came out about him. So you know, he ended up disappearing for a while, but he's back, and apparently he's the freak. Oh, the freak. What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, um, that's not. That's not. Here. No, no, the freak. Might, might have to sue him. Michael Cole uh, has to say it about two hundred times per three-minute match. That's so. not right. <laughs> <laughs> so back to Daniel Bryan. I think that Daniel Bryan and Chad Gable would put on a tremendous series. Um, you know, Chad Gable's a guy that's it's like he's floating in obscurity in WWE with just these random feuds. You know, um, nothing to really hone his, you know, th- to become remembered by. And I, I think that if uh, him and Brian had, like, a few, a series of matches, I think that that'd be, a tr- you know, a tremendous series of matches. I mean, imagine those two in the ring together. Yeah, uh, it does sound great, but I also don't trust them to give them a good 25 <laughs> minutes that they would need. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's a lot of matches I'd like to see. I mean, Brian's my favorite modern wrestler. So yes. this sucks. But, you know, even a few years ago, he said that he's winding down. Yeah. You know, he has two kids now. He has Brie Bella. And if I had Brie Bella, I'd be home more often, too. <laughs> but um, something that I guess kind of pisses me off is... Uh, this will tie into the Daniel Bryan thing, but sure. the Edge, the Edge and Randy Orton rematch for well, rubber match for WrestleMania. I would much rather see Edge and Daniel Bryan one time at the Showcase of the Immortals. They never wrestled each other, had they? No. Bryan I, I was mean, uh, he was he was still, I guess, coming up in WWE when Edge was still there, right? When yeah. he retired, yeah. Well, that's interesting to think about. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I would not mind seeing them wrestle each other. I mean, how would that go though? Because you know, Edge is a full timer. I mean, part timer. Excuse me. He's not a guy that's going to come in and basically get a lot of wins uh, with the type of contract he has. He, he's probably going to be there. You know, he for him, it's the excitement of being back in the ring uh, with the business that he loves, and. You know, he has, what is it, three match appearance, three matches a year with uh, however many appearances in his contract. And yeah. so, you know, a lot of those he's not going to get over on, you know. Uh, yeah. So I would assume, like, how would that necessarily go? Well, <clears throat> even if you didn't do it at WrestleMania and mm-hmm. you did it at a different pay-per-view, because I feel like at this point, what's because Edge won last man standing. Mm hmm. And then didn't he lose the other one? Uh, I believe so, yeah. And I'm assuming he's he's winning the title at WrestleMania. I'm assuming. You would think. um, Or or how long is it going to how long is it going to be before he makes his actual comeback, though, comes back? I'm thinking my prediction. He wins the Rumble. You think? Oh, okay. I'm saying he wins the Rumble. I mean, realistically, it's either him or The Rock because it wins the Rumble. Or if The Rock's not available. <laughs> what I mean, makes you realistically, think, what makes at, you think? What makes you think that The Rock's going to win the Royal Rumble? Do you think – you really think that they're going to give someone like him a, a profile like that, a, a high-profile match like the Royal Rumble and a win and then come in and wrestle his cousin for the title? He was supposed to do it at um, one of the Rumbles in the last few years, but they changed plans. Um. Because if you have, if you look at it, what's the most viable Roman match that they're building towards, and the highest rumored one right now, it's The Rock. Right. And it's almost, I'm like ninety percent sure we're getting Edge and Orton. So one of them two has to win the Rumble. You're not the only one that said that the that's a match that's uh, pretty much definite that the, that they're predicting. I mean, you know, Brian Alvarez has also said it, and I think Meltzer you know i've said it as well so i think it's a very big possibility that that match is going to happen edge and uh, orton at wrestlemania but do you, do you think it's a little too early i mean to start i mean the way wwe works you know like a faster pace than when 
we were when we were younger, how everything was uh, a little bit slower. And you'd have somebody a champion almost a year to a year, and then they'd build up for that feud uh, for a year for WrestleMania. And right now, I mean, they're, so it's, what, eight months away, seven months away, something like that, WrestleMania. Yeah. You think, I mean, do you think they're going to have Orton hold that title for that long? I mean, who else do you think would win it? Who, honestly, right now, <laughs> do you think is going to beat Randy Orton clean for the title? I don't. Uh, the only person I would say clean would be Drew McIntyre winning it back. Clean. I don't, uh, see, I don't see that I happening. Don't, you know, um, I, I don't think that Drew McIntyre's days as champion are over. I'm going to tell you that. I think there is another win in there somewhere. Yeah. For um, sure. I, I think somewhere down the line. Yeah. He's still young. I mean, he's well, not young, but he's 36 years old. So there's still, a, you know, he doesn't have that many years left. You know what I mean? Probably 10 years left before he starts really winding down. Unless he gets seriously injured. But I also think that it's very possible the Miz White won't take it with the money in the bank. I think yeah. it's, you know, I'm going to go with like a 90% chance that he's going to win it. It's not going to be at a pay-per-view. It's going to be uh, similar to how he did it before on like a Monday Night Raw randomly. Well, I think it'd be hilarious if he did it on Orton again. So <laughs> I think it's going to happen. Yeah, I honestly think it's going to happen. I actually yeah. popped uh, the first time it happened, like legitimately, because yeah. yeah. it was like one of those things that just kind of came out of nowhere. But going back to Brian, let's mm. say you have an announced final match or what you think could be his final match. Who's your last opponent for him? Christ. The f- NWWE. Um, yes. Jesus Christ. It'd be somebody would have to come back. You know who I'm saying? I'd have to say CM Punk. Oh, you know, it's, I know there's like a oh 99.99999 chance that that will not happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I think that that would put asses in seats for a final match. The thing with that is, don't have Brian lay down because everybody clo- lays down on the way out. Go to a 20 minute time limit draw at a at WrestleMania. Tell me that wouldn't be awesome. Oh, I think that that would be phenomenal. God. That's better than what we're actually going to get. So Yeah, well, well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is true. As far as, like, current roster. Like, let's say he has to put somebody over. Let's say he is going to lay down for that last match. Who would you have him put over? I'd like to see him. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to name a, a few guys. I think Keith Lee would be a fucking phenomenal match. I think Keith Lee is one of my favorite wrestlers today in WWE. You know, I think he did a phenomenal job in uh, NXT. What he's doing now in on the main roster is pure shit. They're really burying him. Uh, they're making him look terrible. Yeah, but considering his first match in there, he beat Randy Orton like less than five minutes or something like that. And yeah. then all of a sudden, every week after that, there's been a huge dip, decline. Have him come in and... That'll fucking change everything around in Keith Lee and then skyrocket Keith Lee towards that title. Uh, I think Tommaso Ciampa would be another excellent match. Man, that would even um, even Finn Balor, I think, would be great. Yeah, I think that'd be good. I think they would have good chemistry. I don't think I'd want him to put Finn Balor over. But Gargano right. would be another good one. Well, that was going to be my third pick, Johnny yeah. Gargano. I think that that would be, you know, Johnny Gargano could work really great fast-paced yeah. style. Um, he's done some amazing matches on the NXT uh, pay-per-views. You know, he's like um, he's like the resident hero of NXT. You know what I mean? He's like that guy that's locked in Mr. NXT type person. Yeah. Yep. You know, so... I think that that would be another one, and I, I think that that, and I think that if Brian laid down for him, I think that that would skyrocket Gargano and him being able to jump to the main roster and you know succeed in the main roster. I don't, you know, he had only popped up on the main roster for a few matches before going back down to NXT. Uh, I don't know if that was necessarily Vince uh, Vince's idea. 
and he did not accept Gargano. But I know that you know when him and uh, Tommaso Ciampa went up there, he he did not join the main roster because he doesn't want to leave Florida. You know he likes uh, wrestling and for NXT. He likes the schedule and he likes you know being in that in that area without having to travel 300 days out of the year. 300 days, excuse me. Do you think Chad Gable is a possibility of that final opponent? I think it's a very good possibility, but would that be something to? Would you want? See, I, my guess would be it would be somebody that they would be elevating towards that next level for a world championship. Mm. Do you think? I mean, I know personally, I would love to see that, but I don't. I don't think there's no way Hunter or Vince would ever that would ever cross their mind to put something on somebody so small like that. I mean, he's yeah. smaller than he's smaller than Daniel Bryan, right? Yeah. I mean, the only reason they ever put it on Rey Mysterio was because the cash in on the Eddie hype. So, right. realistically, the are the odds aren't the statistics and the odds aren't in his favor. Right. But here's what I think is going to happen, okay. knowing knowing WWE. I think his final match will be John Cena. Because A, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> B, you're not elevating shit. And C, they have such a history together. They do. So I could easily see Cena coming back for a one-off, you know, do five weeks of TV, and then the pay-per-view payoff match, and then that's it. Right. And, I mean, they have kind of unfinished business. I mean, not that they really pay attention to continuity and stuff, but, you know, Cena that doesn't has... Matter. That doesn't yeah. matter in, in McMahon land. You know, yeah. <laughs> you should know that. I think, so, I mean, this is just a lot, you know, there's a lot of possibilities as to what can happen with the end of Brian's career. I, I think my choice would be uh, Gargano. Yeah. That's my number one pick for the final match. I'd have to say that, or Tommaso, you yeah. know. But like I said, the current main roster guys, I'd have to say Lee, Keith Lee, because, um, like I said, I think that eventually they'll they'll want to groom Keith Lee in for world championship uh, status. Just my so, opinion. So, would you actually want to see CM Punk and Brian, or do you think that's just the money match? I think that would be. I mean, they're pretty good friends. You know, mm-hmm. they have been for many, many years since you know the independence. Um, would I want to see it? Sure. Why not? Yeah. I think it'd be, you know, CM Punk has been on the shelf for how long ago was it now? Six years? 14 was when he left. Yeah. So he's well rested, you know, get in there, practice a little bit, uh, work out. And then I think that those guys have him go to a 20 minute time limit draw. I think it'd be a fun match. I think it'd be phenomenal. And I'm not even the world's biggest punk fan. You know, I do like him, but uh, that was WWE run I liked a lot more than, like, say, him in Ring of Honor. It's just That's me. Fair. It's That's just, fair. Yeah. I didn't really, I didn't really grasp the uh, what was so great about him in the Independence. You know, I, I think that a lot, a lot of that had to do with the 90 minute Iron Man match I saw of him with uh, Chris Hero, Cassius Ono. Like they, they were like that uh, kind of turned me off. I mean, like this is, it was just very pretentious to watch you know yeah. so but on uh, when he came to wwe you know and it didn't click right away either it just i saw that he was uh the way he was being booked you know and I, and I enjoyed him quite a bit so i think that that would be a good match and like you said it would definitely be a money match absolutely especially at cm punk coming back one more match well if he were to come back and face anyone like if they said hey let's have you come back and face hunter he'd be like fuck no but if they said <laughs> hey why don't you come back and face Brian? I think that's one of the few people he'd be like, all right, let's talk. I think that that would be, there would be more of a chance of that yeah. happening than, uh, yeah, I think there's definitely like a way. I think he'd actually even, like you said, let's talk. He'd open his ears a little bit more, but if it came to somebody like that or, uh, you know, and, and the thing with punk is he's not getting any younger. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The more he stays away, the less of a chance there is of him coming back, too. So, yeah, that's the other thing. (laughs) 
So we got Survivor Series in three weeks. Uh, some matches have actually been announced, Steve. Uh, I know, was it two weeks ago? A week ago when we were talking about Hell in Cell, the pre-show preview that we were giving out, the prediction show. There was only four matches, and that was only <laughs> announced. And that was, what, three days prior to the show? Yeah. We were three, three weeks away, and now there's six matches. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, it's because I don't give them any credit because these matches wrote themselves. They're title versus title matches. Well, there's that as well. Um, and there are, two, so far it looks like there's going to be, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading my notes here, two uh, survivor matches as of now, as of present time. Um, do you remember when the shows were just three hours of Survivor matches? And then, oh my God, what was it? And then there was a Survivor series, I believe, that had no Survivor matches. I remember one year. I think that's the year Foley won the title. Yeah, Maybe. and even 2002, it had elimination matches, but it didn't have a yeah. traditional match. Yeah, it had the Chamber, and it had a Triple Threat tag team elimination match. So that technically doesn't count. So there was two Jesus years that Christ. they didn't have any traditional. It just sounds like they were trying to get everybody on the roster on the show. Yeah. <laughs> so. But Survivor Series is my favorite paper of the year. You know, fuck WrestleMania. Oh. WrestleMania hasn't um, impressed me in years. So it hasn't knocked my socks off since WrestleMania 11. No, I'm kidding. I only said that. <laughs> I, was, I only said I only said that because I was there. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember that, it being. That's your WrestleMania. That was the first WrestleMania I went to. I went to well, 35. I went to 35 as well. Okay, I almost went to 35, but I looked at the card. I'm like, nope. Oh, see, my wife gave me uh, tickets for Christmas that year, so I was pretty excited. So yeah. me and her son and. Uh, her best friend, we went up there, drove to, and it actually only took us like two hours to get there. And um, it was quite enjoyable. You know, they open up, they rent out like a big part of the arena for like the store, the merchandise store where whatever fucking team plays there. And it's a WWE store. I kind of passed up. I got a Kurt Angle shirt, of course, after like two months, it got some stain on it. I don't know what the hell happened to it. <laughs> I'm trying well, to find. Hey, I, that was very special to me because it was the Kurt Angle uh, retirement shirt, you know? Yeah. And um, so I'm trying to find another one in my size, but I passed up on a WrestleMania coffee mug, and I can't find those particular coffee mugs from that WrestleMania online anymore either. Yeah, mine was 34, and I'm not. I don't. I don't really buy merch, but I did steal the person. The person behind me. I buy DVDs. That's about it. I got I two of those. I got not from that, but I have the WrestleMania, and then. It just so happened, coincidentally, Money in the Bank was in Hartford, Connecticut that year. So I went to two pay-per-views in a row. So I ended up, uh, so I, I have two cups. I have one from WrestleMania, one from Money in the Bank. Yeah, I'm not one for uh, the WWE merch. I'll get, like, other, like, stupid shit, like Jim Cornette's restraining order. To me, that, come on. I, I have it. I have it <laughs> exactly. Too. You know, autographs and stuff. But, yeah, I have, I have never bought a wrestling shirt in my life, and I probably never will. I, I, I do like getting stupid Do you know how many I have? Do you know how many I have? So probably like 70, 80. I don't know. You were close the first time. 60. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> and I'm not done. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, well, so, look at the DVDs. I ain't done either. Yeah. So. Oh, um, I get those as well. It's just they got to be something special. It's not – I'm not like a – Completest like yourself. Yeah, I unfortunately, do. Unfortunately, because yeah. I spent I spent my day running around to four different WalMarts today. That's okay. I saw uh, somebody messaged me today. My friend Will. Um, he um, you know, Five Below, the store Five Below. You guys got one by you. Um, yep. they've been some WWE figures and other such things have been popping up in there. Now I got about. Six or seven of them. They're just standard nine dollar figures that they got there for five dollars. I bought the AJ Rusev, Bobby Roode, Kurt Angle, basically anyone that I thought that I might somewhere down the road be able to get autographed. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. AJ's That's cool. probably gonna AJ's gonna get retired at some point. You know, down the road. I don't think he's even stated he only has a few more years. One of the things that um, my buddy sent me a picture that they have. If you remember the old muscles. They were like a certain type of figure. They were like a 
brownish type, more like a rubbery type figure. And then they made them WWE versions. They were not wrestlers like the original series. They were just kind of, and I know that there was an AWA muscles figures, but now WWE just printed some and, and they were there at five below. So I got to take a trip there tomorrow. There you go. Because I'm a fucking mark. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Back to Survivor Series. We just totally ranted about being fanboys. Um, yeah. So there's going to be Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. Uh, so for actually the women's match and the men's Survivor's match. Before we actually start breaking down these matches, um, NXT is not being taken part of uh, as of present time. And according to uh, an article... On ringside news that Vince McMahon is uh, backing up from supporting NXT, bringing NXT in. And last year they were all over it because they're trying to get viewers. And I think that he's kind of giving up on it on his end, from what I read. Well, I didn't think they were going to be. But if you noticed on when they were promoting it mm-hmm. on Monday, the yeah. yellow was still included in the logo and the graphics. So it was still blue. Red and yellow. I'm going to have to go back and check that. I did not notice that. Uh, and the, the, the current uh, Survivor Series logo is what you're saying. Yeah. It had, okay. like, the graphics and everything. And when they were promoting it, it still had the yellow in the middle, like last year. Unless okay. they edit that out eventually. Um, well, I'd, actually, I'd actually rather NXT not be a part of it personally. I may be in the hardcore minority there. But I, I'd rather um, them just... Well, this is an article I read yesterday or today, so um, that was, maybe it was today because today's Tuesday, shit. So yesterday was Monday Night Raw, so who knows? Things could have changed in the last 24 hours. And not for nothing, NXT dominated, uh, you know, Raw and SmackDown last year. They won the majority of the matches, and, and I think that that was a really good way to try to get NXT over and to get viewers, but it didn't work. You well, know, they still have the same amount of viewers they do every yeah, week. If uh, AEW hadn't had a show on Wednesday nights, they would have not included NXT in Survivor Series last year. Come on. You're absolutely I believe you're right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, at this point, I'm kind of 50-50 on if NXT, I was actually going to say no, but then I saw the graphic last night, and that's kind of how mm-hmm. everyone else was. They're like, oh shit, the graphic's still all three colors. I'm like, well, maybe maybe it's one of those things where they're just kind of they put it there for now, just in case they decide to include NXT. Right. But well, maybe I mean, it'll be in, maybe it'll be announced announced tomorrow night. We're still three weeks away. We never know what the hell is going to happen. Yeah. You know, as of that. So yeah, NXT could NXT could start building up next year. Maybe uh, next uh, tomorrow during yeah. Halloween Havoc. I mean, who knows? They could show up Friday night. Now, are Raw and SmackDown still pre-taped? Oh, I think they're live, are they? They are live. I don't know. I don't know. Very possibility. It's Team Raw as of uh, right now. AJ Styles and Keith Lee and Sheamus. And two members to be decided against Team SmackDown, which nobody has uh, named yet. So we'll probably figure that out this Friday. There's going to be some qualifying matches. Who do you think will be on that side? I um I don't really know much of the SmackDown roster. <laughs> I'm sorry, but um I yeah I know we're we're in the same boat as as a is, uh, time. Is, I mean so I'm I haven't sure, been. I'm sure Brian he's he's on SmackDown yes. right yeah yeah Brian Kevin Owens uh, I think are two names that are probably going to be pulled there. Uh, yeah. Trying to think of some of the other wrestlers that are up there Cesaro yeah. maybe. Is he around? I where, yes, where's he, he, is. Where's he been? Like he's he's. I just saw him last week, uh, okay. or maybe the week before. Yeah, I, I haven't been keeping up on SmackDown either. Uh, I've actually tuned into Raw a couple time, a couple more times than I have uh, SmackDown. I, I at least uh, have been trying to give it a try uh, to try to keep up on the product at least uh, for the sake of the podcast. As you know, it's not necessarily something that we always keep up on. And it helps when you're trying to review a WWE pay-per-view as well. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, the way I see it, like I said, Survivor Series has always been my favorite pay-per-view. But if you look at the last few years, mm-hmm. to me, it's been pay-per-view of the year. Um, no matter how bad the product is, Survivor Series has killed it the last few years. It really has. I think as a, you know, that's always one that I've always pretty much watched. 
yeah. uh, for the last few years. I didn't uh, for a while. Like I said before, I wasn't always keeping on up on up on WWE product. Uh, you know, it wasn't until I met my wife and her son was a WWE fan that I started watching it again a little bit here and there. But I always watched the pay per views, <clears throat> and Survivor Series definitely was the one that stuck out as the best pay per view of the year. Especially, I think last year with the NXT invasion, I think for the first time in how many years the crowd was hot throughout the whole entire show. And I mean, like old school, old school style crowd heat, you know? Yeah. And 2018, I fucking loved Brock Lesnar and Brian. I think mm-hmm. that was to me that's a five star <laughs> match. And that's, I don't say that for WWE anymore. Like, to me, that yeah. match was a storytelling masterpiece. 2017 was great with AJ and Brock. And 16 was really good as well. So, yeah. and, you know, I, no matter how much, how distant I am from the product, yeah. Survivor Series is my weakness. I always pay attention. And for the women's match at 5-5, five and five, uh, the Raw team has been announced. It's going to be Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, who are the current WWE Women's Tag Team Champions with Man- Mandy Rose, Dana Brooke, and Lana. So the whole team has been Jesus. announced for uh, Women's Monday Night or Raw against Team SmackDown, who is yet to be announced. Uh, Lana, there's been a running joke where she's been going through a table every week for like the last five, six weeks. Uh trying to bury her because her husband showed up on AEW TV, or is she, is she also on her way out? Uh, either way, I'm sure she's not really caring because she's getting paid. So, yeah. to do that, that, I mean, that's how I would look at it. A lot of people always, you know, but who that, knows? I'm not, I'm not one of these, one of these guys. So that might be the worst survivor series team of all time right there. <laughs> Holy shit. I think the only true real talented wrestler there and no offense to the other four women but Shayna baszler is the actual okay. I was one, gonna say. one that one could actually go what would you think i was gonna say dana brooke or no i was worried mandy rose see we've never really talked about my absolute hatred for nia jack so hold up i already told you what i thought well were you even here on sunday when i told you how i felt about her <laughs> i was here but i wasn't here i told you i said that you know, she's not. I kind of have a bias. I think that she's she's pretty green. She works still pretty green. She's got a pretty face. She's not that great in the ring. You know what I mean? She needs to be fired. She's dangerous. She's gonna kill somebody. Yeah, but look at somebody like Stan Hansen, who basically took people's heads off every week. She was he was pretty dangerous. Yeah, but she's careless. Like. It's it's like that buckle bomb or whatever the hell that was supposed to be with Kari Sane when she's telling her oh, I'm not yes. set I'm not set and she just chucks her anyway and then next week she just chucks her head first way too close to the fucking steel steps and just rattles her like it's mm. shit like that she the only reason she's there is because she's related to the Rock yeah, I hate uh, I hate her I would love nothing more to see, than to see her publicly humiliated and. In the fucking city hall. I hate her with a dying passion. She can fuck off. Wow. Jesus Christ. Champion versus champion. Uh, Raw's United States champion Bobby Lashley takes on SmackDown's Intercontinental champion and Sami Zayn. I think this is... Oh my God, I gotta be honest with you. Yeah. Bobby Lashley is... He just knows nothing for me in WWE. Or at yeah. least his, uh, his, his current run. You know, a lot of people keep telling me that his impact run, he was really good. They let him cut his own promos without being pre-scripted and that they were really good. Uh, I'm just not buying buying him. I never really thought he was great during his first run in WWE. Um, I have a feeling, though, however, this is just going to be a squash match and Sami Zayn's just going to lose. Yeah, well, you got the new nation here. So um, 
who do we have in here? We the have Hurt Business. Yeah, New yeah. Nation. We have Cedric Alexander. I'd rather see him. Yes. Fuck, I, I'll see MVP and Sami Zayn. That's fine. I will take Shelton anyone. Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin. Oh, MVP. that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Well, Shelton Benjamin. Is, like, what are they Zane? doing with Shelton Benjamin? I don't Does he? Know. He doesn't even win matches anymore. It's like he came back, and he's still relatively young. Was he early to mid thirties? So I mean, he's coming in doing jobs pretty much every week. Yeah, I so mean, I'm, he's to me, he's one return. of the he's one of the most underrated wrestlers. I think he really is. You know, I think that guy's got a lot of potential to go out there and put on. Um, you know, there's another guy that could go with Brian. Oh. That, Tell me that, that that would be that, a phenomenal match. Yeah, they, that, that, that's like one of those sleeper dream matches right there. That's yeah. like the dream match you never thought. Give you'd them be. a sixty minute Iron Man match, okay? Oh, I would sit there and watch that. I'm Hell a fan. Yeah. This is, I'm a fan of Iron Man matches. So am I. As, as, at least if they're good, you know. And so. none of that thirty minute bullshit. I like the sixty minute. Like, don't give me well, that. Well, that's the thing. Is like thirty minute thing is like I see these guys wrestle the twenty minute time limit draws on house shows or on TV. So 30 minutes is really nothing special. No. You, know, you know what I mean? 60 minutes is another thing. That's no. just, yeah. That's. I saw one of the, not one of the first, but probably, I've been going to shows for a few years, you know, since like the later 80s. So in early 92, during Ric Flair's uh, WWF run, I saw him and Bret Hart in a 60-man Iron Man match. Oh, in my God. The Hartford Civic Center for the world title. Now, you want to talk, like, those are just two of the greatest of all time wrestling each other for 60 minutes, and I got to witness that live. That's that's an experience. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, like, a lot of like wrestling fans don't understand how good that is. They think, it's like, oh, God, it's 60 minutes. Let me fast forward through it. No, you gotta. You're you're not gonna understand it if you fast forward through half the match. Yeah, and I actually I'm in the minority here. You might shit on me. I was not a fan of Bret. <laughs> Sh- I wasn't really a fan of WrestleMania 12's Iron Man match. It was a very WWF <sighs> Iron Man match. I hear what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, I'm not a Shawn Michaels fan by any means. I'm seeing some of my glasses are bothering me today. That's where the dislikes are coming in. I hate yeah. Shawn Michaels. So um. I've grown to hate him less over the years. When I was younger, though, when I I did like him when he was a tag team wrestler, him and Marty Jannetty. It's just that, you know, when he went through his singles or his first singles run, but I just wasn't buying him as the top heel. Because to me, he was always a guy that was intercontinental level status or light heavyweight, whatever you want to call it. And it's just... You know, I mean, he could go out there and have phenomenal matches with guys like Bret Hart. Sure. I'm not going to say that it wasn't a great match. It was a great match. It's just. And I think that the end where, you know, they went 60 minutes and it was a draw. So they had to have what overtime. I thought that that was a that's a great concept. It's just it's not my favorite. Yeah. And I might watch that. I might watch that when I go to bed. Jesus. I don't put you to sleep, all right. But um, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, the thing about the overtime, I thought the overtime was too short. Would it go five minutes? I thought it was less than that. Oh, maybe. I don't know. So there's no point in it, basically. Yeah, like if you did like another ten minutes. Mm-hmm. But from what I heard, a lot of the crowd was just kind of leaving early because they just weren't really into it. But I'll tell you what, Shawn Michaels... At times, he can be one of the all-time greats in the ring, but he is yeah. one of the biggest douchebags of all time. And don't mm. give me that born-again Christian shit. He Once a douchebag, always a douchebag. I got an ex-wife that's born again, so I know exactly what you're saying. Oh, there you it's go. It's just, it's, you know, it's, it's just... These it's just an excuse. Crazy. It's yeah. an excuse. It's rationalizing exactly. your past behavior. Yes, exactly. Because they gave it, but I don't believe in that born again stuff because of that. And Shawn Michaels is no exception. You know, he, he might have gotten older and then just realized he was an asshole. I'll give you that. You know what I mean? He apologized to Brett and they kind of made up in conversation. Yeah. And they and they still do video projects together every now and again. And so I mean, you know. but then but then you hear stories after his 2002 return, like Hurricane Helms. He has a really just awful Shawn Michaels story. And, you know, it, you see little things that Shawn Michaels still does, and you're like, well, there, there's old Shawn again. He's yeah. just trying, he's, he's better at hiding it. I've always thought that. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a very big possibility. All right, so the New Day and... Nope, the New Day take on the Street Profits, I'm sorry. Both of them are the SmackDown Raw Tag Team Champions, respectively. So basically, you know, these two were both drafted to each brand. You know, um, New Day were SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Street Profits were Raw, and they both got drafted to opposite brands, so they traded the tag they team titles. They switched the titles. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm gonna, I, oh, I, that's some Vince Russo shit right there. Okay. Yeah. That made no sense <laughs> whatsoever. They just swapped the titles. Like, who came up with that? Did they do that themselves? Or was there somebody in there like Adam Pierce or Pat Buck that came out and said, listen, you guys are champs. Just swap them. I honestly, Nobody, I honestly think they forgot they were champions. So they just rotated them. They're like, oh, shit, what are we going to do? Just have them swap it. It's all good. That's some WWE booking right there. That's just atrocious. And I'll tell um, you what. I never um, thought – oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I never thought I'd see the day where I root for the New Day. Honestly, for the first time ever, I will take the New Day over the other garbage we're getting on the other side of the ring. Um. Yeah, I'm going to say I would like to see that happening, but uh, the Street Profits, I have a feeling are going to take the win because I have a feeling that they still have a lot to prove compared to the New Day. Um, I don't mind. Now we're going to get to this portion of the conversation of the uh, of that match. I don't mind the New Day. <clears throat> the gimmick is really goofy. As individuals, I think the – and I think uh, – did I discuss this the other night? Maybe uh, when we were talking about it. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> it's possible that Xavier Woods is the weak link of the group. I think Big E has a title, title run in him, singles title run in him. Uh, when he was in NXT, I always enjoyed his work. Uh, I thought he was a bit goofy. like. Uh, but spending the last few years on the main roster, I think that he's you know grown into somebody that could be – good professional and, yeah. and, and carry the company at least for a couple months. Now, Kofi, I don't think is a bad wrestler either. I thought the match he had with Brian at WrestleMania last year was pretty damn good. And I'm not just saying that it's just because it's uh, Daniel Bryan. I think that he's, I hate, don't get me wrong. When he first came in, he was doing that Jamaican gimmick and all that stuff. I thought it was ridiculous. He had the fake accent. Yeah. Um, That's not his fault. No. It's it's creative's part, but I think that you know he's grown I, he's grown on me over the years. I think he actually is very capable of putting on some. F- I don't want to say four star. I'm being nice, but four star matches at the at best, maybe three star matches. Okay. Um. Here here's my. I'll go through all three of them too. Biggie. Sure. I completely agree with you on Biggie. Mm-hmm. Um. Him and Keith Lee. That's kind of a dream match for me. Oh, uh, that would be that'd be yeah. Right, okay. Right, right. Um, but here's the problem: I, I'd have Keith Lee win that. But oh, so it, yeah. there's really no point. I'm, having like that I said, match. you know, I'm a, I'm a Keith yeah. Lee mark. I'm a Keith Lee mark. So you know, um, Xavier, he has a great personality, so I think he works better as a manager personally. I think that's why he's on the sidelines ninety percent of yeah. the time, like on the outside. Yeah. And then Kofi. He's fine. You know, he's good. If you want to have a decent nine o'clock Raw match, throw Kofi in there. He'll do the job. But I think my problem is all three of them together. It's been like five years now. Like it's just, yeah, I think 15, maybe late 14 is uh, six years. But the whole unicorn shit, they're the bootios. Like, it's just, I hate when you get too meta and just make fun of the sport that I love. Yes, I completely 100% so, agree with you on that. Yes. It was fine, but like, probably like 2017 is break them up. Yep. And it's just, it went way too far here. It really did. I think they beat the uh, demolition, and that's how long they held the tag titles, right? They did. I was yeah. very upset that night. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. 
that's a different rant. I'm a demolition <laughs> mark, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I like the axe and the smash, but, you know, Crush was the better lineup, just saying. I always say that, and everybody just looks at me like no. I'm retarded. No. Yeah, you are retarded I, for that one. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm not okay. serious. Right. I, feel bad for, I feel bad for Brian. Uh, was that Brian Adams? Yeah. Yeah, Brian Adams. Not the singer, but anyways. Um, Asuka and Sasha Banks, Raw Women's Champion against SmackDown Women's Champion. Sasha just won the title uh, this past Sunday, so I think it'd be kind of insane if they actually had her lose her you know, lose that close after winning. Not that the, it's not a championship match. It's just, uh, it's it's just that you know. I just think that it shouldn't happen. I don't think because like, they need to have her look as a strong champion, and I think that to have her go over Oscar. And I love Oscar. I think she's great. Yeah. And, and I think the match that Sasha had on Sunday night, and I said this on Sunday when we reviewed it, that that was the best match of the night. Don't remember it. You need to go back and watch it, and and, I, and go and go back and watch your live feed too. <laughs> oh, it was. I did go back and watch. I can't watch myself on camera. Me neither. So I had. That's why I don't. Yeah, I don't watch these videos that we make. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, I, well, when I'm editing them, yes, but not afterwards. I watched a few minutes of it. I'm like, this is turning private. So Even yeah, worse. that stream is no longer up. Oh, I wonder. if... So I guess I can't view it again. I was trying to find that. If one. you want, I'll send you a link. I can yeah. send people links. But um, okay. yeah, I was just like, oh man, that's bad. And they demonetized that stream. So that stream, that particular yeah. stream, yeah. yeah, that one got demonetized for some stupid. I think I had the audio too loud in the background, but yeah, oh, okay. Which is so stupid. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I heard that was the best match. Um, I. I do agree, because I remember the finish. That's about it, though. But mm-hmm. I, the whole chair thing was incredibly, incredibly fucking stupid. So, you know, Brian Alvarez put it best. You know, the whole chair well, was just Please go watch just, that. There's just so many weapons that were involved. Like, it just it amazes me that there was, like, 30 fucking kendo sticks down below. Yeah. And how did the kendo stick, first off, for the... Next, for the main event, how did the kendo stick get on top of the fucking roof? I mean, did Randy come down earlier or go climb the rafters and join? I mean, it just seems so ridiculous. It, it really honestly did. And I don't know if you noticed this. Uh, I, I didn't mention it on Sunday. I'll mention it now before we get to uh, the main, well, the other match for the Survivor Series. Um, They cut holes in the cage and the hell in the cell that you could purposely climb. There's they always did big, that. Never noticed it before. Yeah, they did. It, it's, it's a little more noticeable because it's red now. But yeah, I just find it really bizarre to be honest well, with you. They also have holes on the sides so the camera lens can go in. Yeah, that those I've known about. Yeah, those. but there are there have always been footholds. I don't know if for the first one. I'd have to go back and check. Because mm-hmm. um, Shawn Michaels, obviously, you know, he had the spot, but when he was on the side, so I I'd have to go look, but. Yeah, a lot of, I'd say 90% of the time, there were footholes. Okay. Which is stupid. But you have to, you also have to think about the wrestler's safety. That's true. Could you climb up a 20-foot structure, just this little fencing? I'd climb up about three feet and get scared. <laughs> well, I would climb up, and then I'd fall. So. Yeah. Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 3,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 100 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. All right, everybody. So, then, uh, so far, the match uh, WWE title versus Universal title. New WWE champion Randy Orton taking on Roman Reigns, the new tribal chief. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> the new tribal chief. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought it was pretty amazing that Alpha and Sika came out and handed him the 
uh, you know, put the lay over him and announced him. But uh, what I uh, was talking to you about before uh, we went on, <laughs> this is just funny that apparently the, was it Jimmy and Jay have to follow him around? Like, basically, like, they're his servants or something now. That's how it works. Yeah, but does that mean they're going to turn heel, or are they going to play babyface in that role? They're probably going to be these sympathetic heels. Like yeah. They're, te- they're technically babyfaces, but, you so know. So Darth Vader. Darth, well, I guess so. <laughs> so that's <laughs> a, a sympathetic heel. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you watch it in so, order. You know, so they, they have no choice but to bow down to the to the baby face, or to the heel, excuse me. Uh, so which is basically, it's furthering the storyline for probably... I don't know, what's the December pay-per-view called? TLC, I think. TLC, so, you know, basically gearing up people for that. You know what right. I mean? So where there's going to end up be, there'll be that until, I don't know, two weeks before where they fucking turn on Roman completely and get the the fans behind them. So they'll have the fans behind them pretty much the whole time. It's just in a sympathetic manner. Huh. But a lot of people are loving that storyline. I completely find it drivelous and atrocious. I, I, think it's, just, I thought that match was boring. I did. It, it, you know, and they keep saying, oh, it was a half hour long. I'm like, how is it a half hour long? It took up 50 minutes of the fucking hour. Well, yeah. and that, I'm sure you had the introduction, so give that five minutes yeah. to show. And then, you know, how long? I mean, it ended at 8 or 7.50 uh, Eastern time. So... I don't know what they're including. I don't know. Either way, yeah. Uh, yeah, that match was just boring. I thought the finish was stupid. But oh, I, from what I've seen... Here, all right, here's my thing. Yeah, Pe- People it. love the finish where I'm like, no, it's fucking stupid. Here's mm-hmm. why. I love the first few Hell in a Cell matches the best, where... You know, even nowadays, it's marketed as, oh, you can't escape. No one can come in and no one can come out. Name a Hell in a Cell match, and there's probably a 50% chance nowadays that either someone came in or someone came out. This match had all these people coming in. You had fucking Jimmy Uso coming in. You had a referee. You had some agents, producers I didn't recognize. And it's just like, it wasn't even a Cell match anymore. It was just a badly booked WCW mayhem or something like and you saw the later match uh orton and mcintyre orton just so happened to have a pair of bolt cutters out of nowhere yeah like, like they just happen to be under the ring it's mad awesome yeah yeah it's bullshit it's it's complete bullshit nobody has nobody there has any idea what the fuck they're doing anymore just like you also shouldn't have three cell matches in one pay-per-view and you also shouldn't even have a gimmick pay-per-view in the first place yeah. I remember when you didn't know when the next cell match was going to be. Mm-hmm. When it was announced, you're like, fuck yeah. And it was only announced for the rivalries that needed that big climax blow off. And now you just have. It's every year. They already have the whole yeah. thing. They build up particular matches for it. Uh, you know, just like a certain feud. And they're just like, oh, we're doing this. Putting them in the, you know, this is only the second time those two wrestled, though. Isn't it Roman and the yeah. the, U, the USO because yeah. they wrestled on the last pay per view? So it's like, why? What was the purpose of them having a Hell in a Cell match already? Because it's obviously the storyline is going to continue. And I think Sasha and Bailey have already waited this long. Wait till WrestleMania. Have them so. have them be together. Have Sasha win the Rumble. There you go. That's your yeah. WrestleMania Women's Main Event right there. Okay. I think that that's not wrong. So we're going to do a few more minutes. Do you have anything else that you want to bring up before? I think I'm good. I'm okay. angry enough. <laughs> <laughs> so I watched a shit ton of wrestling over the uh, course of the day. Uh, well, besides listening to a million podcasts and busted open. Um, I watched Ring of Honor's Pure Tournament, the uh, semifinals tonight. You have to really go and check this out. I every week you're laughing. I could tell. Um, uh, it's because everyone tells me to, and I just haven't. <laughs> I think it's highly recommended because I think that honestly yeah. this is what's going to be bringing Ring of Honor back and the eyes on Ring of Honor because the talent that they're bringing in for this is phenomenal. 
Uh, the semifinals, uh, Josh Woods took on Jonathan Gresham. Now, I really wanted Josh Woods to win this match. Um, Josh the Goods Woods. He rem- <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jeez. He, I, uh, well, the first time I saw him, what, a few weeks back, uh, crap, I'm trying to remember who he wrestled. Anyways. He's another one of those guys that goes out there, no knee pads, kind of old school, kind of shooter type, like a, like a Drew Gulak. And he lost Jonathan Gresham with a sunset flip. <laughs> Mind you, I know this is pre-taped. I don't normally pop when there's pre-taped matches going on, but I actually popped because I was like rather upset because I thought this Woods guy, uh, I wanted him to win. I really did, but it was a phenomenal match. And uh, go ahead. I, I will say this. Yeah, like, the reason I laughed is literally because everyone has told me, check this out, check this out. I haven't watched Ring of Honor in so fucking long. And I think you're right that this um, could bring it back because now more than ever, I see so many people tweeting about it. There's Mm -hmm. so much interest. I see it all over the place. I haven't seen interest for Ring of Honor in a while. Yeah, I think because, uh, was it last year, the year before, uh, basically everybody was getting signed to NXT. Yeah. Punishment Martinez, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, guys like Gargano, Cole, uh, everybody was just getting picked up. Roderick Strong, you know, that guy had a really nice lengthy run there. Bobby Fish, uh, Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, there was just a lot of guys that were just getting picked, cherry-picked, basically, and brought to NXT. So basically, you know... You weren't enjoying Ring of Honor. You're gonna enjoy NXT because it's the same shit. Because it just pulled all the good guys. The props to Ring of Honor because they really stuck with it. And they stopped running when the pandemic uh, happened. But when they started coming, when they came back with this pure tournament, this man, this the matches every week have been phenomenal, like legitimately phenomenal. I have not been unimpressed with any anything that I've seen so far. Uh, I didn't. I wrote down the other match. Apparently that happened, but I forgot to write down the results, and I can't even think. <laughs> All right. <Yeah. laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Jay, Jay, Jay Lethal and Tracy Williams, and if I remember correctly, I'm, it was Jay Lethal. I'm trying to. I wish I wrote it down better. I think I got up from my chair and I forgot to write it. But either way, that was another match. I mean, you can never really go wrong with Jay Lethal uh, in the ring. He, he, that's a guy that's worked his ass off for the last like 15 or so years. From the Indies to TNA to Ring of Honor. And I'm surprised we have not seen him in WWE or NXT. Probably for the best. But um, <laughs> this is going to be a very dated question. Does he okay. still do Does he still do Black Machismo? He has not. Uh, the last oh. time I saw him do any of that kind of stuff was at All In. So yes. now he's, uh, yes. yeah, which I thought that match, I'm trying to remember who he even wrestled then. Oh God! Oh, Jesus Christ! That's, that's great, something we great that's beer, something though. we should do for a retro show. That's oh hell yeah! I'm, I'm all in for that. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. Uh-huh. So yeah, I thought that that was a good match. This guy, uh, Hot Sauce Tracy Williams. These Ring of Honor guys got some great nicknames. Um, I think that that was a phenomenal match, and I highly recommend. I'm gonna start sending you links every Monday now to tell you to watch them, and if you don't do watch it, them, yeah. You're going to start coming on Tuesdays, and we're going to be recording as well, as well as covering New Japan. We're going to start covering New Japan very soon here. So I think that we should do what's going to happen is we're just going to cover both of those together. Hey, I'm down. Free I'm always everybody. down for some New Japan. Yeah, me too. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you. The DVD Freak on YouTube. Um, I'm actually trying to do live streams more often, so if you enjoy live streams... You know, join me for that. Uh, my girlfriend actually expressed interest because we did a live stream recently, a drunken one, and that got some insanely good reception. So she had mentioned to me she wants to do them once or right. once a week or once every two weeks. So, yeah, I'm tr- I'm really experimenting with new stuff on my new or not my new my channel. And then social media wise, um, just type in the DVD freak. You'll see the little blue symbol and just click on that because I ain't plugging all of them. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter, uh, the Rick Del Santo. And did you put, yeah, I did. Actually, did. <laughs> I forget every week. I forget every week. You can also uh, keep an eye out for the Instagram TV 
app. Uh, I'm putting up more content there. Sometimes things uh, that I put up on YouTube that are 15 minutes or less are also on there. I'm trying to put up some exclusive content for there as well. Alrighty, everybody. Take care.